only men have a burden of performance, okay? Women really don't. Women, really, all they have to do is maintain their physical attractiveness and really just stay physically desirable. And you know what? Society will continue to praise them. Society will continue to give them freebies and all those goodies that uh, we don't get as men. We have to work for that shit, okay? And as a man, you have to understand that. Okay, you have to understand that you have a burden of performance, which means you have to prove yourself in this world. Even if you're a good looking guy, you gotta prove yourself, okay? You don't get a free pass like women do. Okay, you have to create something of value. You have to do something with your life, right? You have to accomplish something. You have to become something, right? Otherwise, you'll be looked at as a failure. Right? That's how society judges us. You know, it's pretty harsh. You know, I mean, women have it fairly easy, especially good-looking women. I mean, really, they don't have to do much. This is why a lot of good-looking women, not all, but a lot, especially in LA, though, a lot of good-looking women don't have much to offer beyond just their looks, right? They don't have much personality. They don't have much going on in their lives, right? Because they're just getting by on their looks. And I always call these girls out too, by the way. This is one of my favorite things to do when I meet a very attractive woman, right? You know, like a super hot girl. I will literally ask her, what else do you have going for you besides your looks? The girl will always be shocked that I'm asking that, right? And so many of you guys who don't learn game, don't learn pickup, you don't do this. Instead, you fall under the girl's like beautiful woman spell. You fall under her frame. And then what do you do? You start qualifying yourself to her, right? This 18, 19, 20, 21 year old girl that has done nothing with her life, that's been getting by on her physical attractiveness. You are qualifying yourself to her. Even though you've accomplished all of these things in your life and you've done all these great things, you've read all these books, right? She's never picked up a book in her life. Yet here you are qualifying yourself to her because of her physical attractiveness. You're feeding into the the only power that she has as opposed to taking that power away from her and making her qualify herself to you, right? And many times when I approach these girls who are just super hot like that, they're immediately thinking, I'm just gonna be another one of those little bitch beta orbiters who's gonna kowtow to her to her beauty and be like, oh my gosh, you're so fine. You're such a princess. I don't deserve to be here in your presence. Oh my gosh, I'm so lucky. You're beautiful, right? I would just, I would cut my right arm off just to marry you, right? I don't do all that. Instead, once I see a girl who's, who's that hot, I become like an interviewer, I, right? I'm like an interrogator. I wanna know more about her. I wanna know, hey, what else do you have to offer besides just your looks. Name three things about yourself that would make me want to get to know you better, but they can't be about your looks. All right, go. I'll put the girl on the spot like that, right? I'll even say it like that. Okay, go, right? And the girl will be like, okay, um, hmm, I'm a good person. All right, that's one. Okay, keep going, girl. What else? Let's see. Um, I'm nice to people. I'm like, no, 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 that doesn't count because that falls in line with being a good person, right? Okay, come on. What's number two? Don't tell me that's it. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, okay, so I'm studying in school right now to, you know, be an accountant. Oh, cool. Okay, what kind of grades do you get? Um, you know, all of a sudden the girl's like qualifying herself, right? Because I made her qualify herself to me. Right, so we'll pick up lesson for you guys there. But getting back to the topic of the video, only men have a burden of performance, okay? We as guys, we have to do something with our lives, okay? You cannot just sit back, eat potato chips, play video games, become a fat piece of shit, not watch your diet, your health, your money, your finances, just let everything go to shit and then expect the world is going to hold you in high regard because it's not. You're gonna have to do some shit with your life, son. You're gonna have to have some goals, some purpose, right? This is why I teach you guys. You should have a path and purpose in life, right? You should identify what it is that you're here to do in your life, whatever that may be. It could be anything, I don't know. I can't tell you what you're here to do. For me, it took me a while to find what I was here to do, right? It took me a while to find it, where I could add the most value 
to the world, to other men's lives, right? To society, where I could be viewed as having some value in society, okay? Even though I have a lot of haters, right? A lot of guys love me, send me thank you letters, thank you emails, messages, telling me I saved their marriages, I stopped them from committing suicide. You know, I help them meet the woman of their dreams, whatever it is, right? That is where I'm adding value. And eventually that's where my legacy is gonna lie, right? When I'm long gone. And you have to find out what unique talents that you have where you could leave your legacy, where you could create the most value in life, okay? You have to find out what that is. Where are your unique talents where you could do that? Because, again, as a man, you have a burden of performance. You can't just get by, you know, on your charm and charisma or your looks or all of the above, right? You have to do something with your life. You have to make something happen, whether it be in your career, your business, or just out in the world doing something, right? Doing something. Okay, you could be part of a charity or something like that. Maybe you have money. You, maybe you have a ton of money, and uh, you you don't have to do shit. Maybe you have like an inheritance or a trust fund or something like that. Doesn't mean you could just sit back because you have a trust fund. You have to do something with your life, right? Whether you, uh, like I said, join a charity and you give back in another way, right? Maybe you like rescue animals or something. You know, something I'd like to do. If I wasn't doing all this, you know, I'd, I'd like to do something like that. You have to find out where you could add the most value and then do that because you have a burden of performance and society is going to look harshly on you if you don't do anything with your life. I mean, worse off than that, I mean, your parents, your family will look harshly on you if you don't do anything with your life because you're their blood and they're gonna be like, shit, what is this guy doing, right? What is this guy doing with his life? You got to do something and do something that you would be proud of and others would be proud of and don't rest on your laurels either because a lot of guys do that a lot of guys like peaked in high school so they're resting on like their laurels and they they're like forever talking about their old high school memories and how they did this and did that you know and I did some cool things in high school right I won a lot of karate tournaments in high school I got a lot of these uh, trophies that I still have, right, that are sitting in my storage, but I don't rest on that, right? It's not like I'm ram rambling on and on with friends about these karate tournaments I won, like way back when, right? I just, I haven't even really thought about them much, you know, except when I go to my storage and I see the trophies, I'm like, oh yeah, that was cool, that's a great memory, but I don't rest on, I'm not like still living for that today. I'm like, I've moved on, I've got a business now, I've got employees, I've got over a hundred thousand subscribers to cater to. I'm just out there adding value. That's my focus now. I'm not resting on my laurels like, oh yeah, I used to play football, man. I was a quarterback and shit. I remember these games. Let me tell you some of these tight games where I just pulled it out, right? I pulled it out or we ran up the score. I'm not, you know, I'm not necessarily thinking about those memories anymore. I've moved on, right? Because once you kind of rest on your laurels and you let yourself get comfortable, that's when you start stagnating in life and you're no longer growing and no, you're no longer expanding. You should constantly be growing and expanding, right? Even when you retire someday, right? One day you're gonna retire and you're not gonna be working anymore. You can't just retire to nothing, okay? You can't just retire to sitting around the house. You have to retire and continue doing something with your life, right? Do something that keeps you active and alert and awake in life. Because once you stop doing those things, you fall asleep in life, right? You fall asleep in life. And they have a statistic that says, uh, like, on average, within five years of retiring, most men end up dying, right? They end up dying. Why? Right? It's only been five years since they retired. It's because they retired to nothing. Okay, they do nothing, just sit around, and then, you know what, their body stops moving, their minds go to sleep, you know? And then, one day, they wake up, and their body is no longer functioning. 
okay? Because they're no longer moving, right? So just understand, as a man, you have a burden of performance, okay? And it's nothing to complain about, it's nothing to bitch about, you know, it's something that you should just embrace. It's part of being a man, right? And you know what, you'll feel happier as a man, you'll feel more fulfilled when you are on your path and purpose and you're pursuing the things that you are naturally talented at, that you are naturally good at, and you're getting better and better at those things. You're honing your craft, so to speak, right? You're honing your craft. I mean, like for me personally, I'm constantly trying to become a better speaker. I'm trying to become a better communicator, right? I'm trying to become a better instructor every single day. I'm trying to become a better YouTuber. I'm trying to become a better business person, a better boss, a better entrepreneur, you know, a better uncle to my nieces and nephews, a better son to my parents, and a better man, right, for God, right? I'm constantly striving to be better every single day, and that's what keeps me happy, that's what keeps me motivated, that is what keeps me on my path and purpose, that is what keeps me alive, awake, alert, and feeling good in life, and not wanting to go to sleep, right? That's what keeps me in my woo state, right? Each one of you guys should have an internal woo, right? Constantly motivating you, constantly pushing you. Make no mistake, you know, you're not a woman where you could just sit back and just apply the makeup and do the hair and get by, right? Society is not gonna give you any freebies. Even women who aren't attractive, they still get by just because, you know, society views them, hey, she's a woman. You know, they really give women a free pass, you know. I'm not saying that women don't have to work for anything, but, you know, in most cases, they get a lot of passes in life that men don't get, right? They get a lot of passes that we don't get as men. And that's okay, right? That's okay because as men, we have a longer shelf life than women. We have a much longer shelf life. Whereas for women, I mean, you know, for women, most of their shelf life is gone after the age of 25. And then it's all downhill from there, right? They can hang on to their looks all they want, but they have a very short shelf life. Whereas us as guys, we don't, we have a pretty lengthy shelf life, right? We don't hit our prime until the ages of 35 to 45, right? And even after 45, I mean, we could still extend that prime and we could still keep you know, crushing it in life, we could still keep punching away. Well into our 50s and 60s. I mean, look at Trump. Trump is in his 70s, right? Trump is in his 70s. He's like my dad's age, and he has the energy of a 20-year-old. It's insane, right? He has the energy of a 20-year-old, and yeah, I mean, <laughs> he's a guy who is like in his 70s and is still peaking. Like he became, you know, he became like a billionaire in his 40s, and now, like 30 years later in his 70s, he's now president of the United States, <laughs> right? He's president of the United States. He's still like peaking in his 70s, it's crazy. But as for women, I mean, yeah. They don't have the shelf life that we do as guys. And really they're only positive, and I don't even know if this is a positive, is they don't have a burden of performance. But then again, too, this is also why a lot of women, especially when they hit their 30s and 40s, end up on antidepressants because they're depressed with life. They end up having mental issues, psychological issues, right? And I really honestly believe a lot of it goes back to having no burden of performance not having to live up to the expectations that men have to live up to. All right? So I'm gonna wrap this coaching video up here. Until next time, this is Matt Cross from Alpha Male Secrets. Don't forget to smash that like button below. Also hit that notification bell so that you're notified whenever I release a brand new coaching video here on YouTube. Uh, more importantly guys, please make sure you subscribe to my channel really helps me out a ton when you guys subscribe okay because YouTube is constantly changing their algorithm and they're constantly unsubscribing people from uh, 
channels like mine in particular because they don't like what I'm teaching you guys. They don't like that I'm teaching you guys how to be better men, <laughs> right? Please make sure you subscribe to my channel and also share my coaching videos with your buddies and like-minded friends and like-minded coworkers and family members so we could really start creating a movement here and getting more guys on board and getting more guys red pilled and unplugging more guys from the blue pill matrix. It helps everybody out when you share red pill content like this, when you share coaching videos like mine, okay? And for you guys who want to support my work and support all of this red pill content I'm teaching guys here even further, the best way to do that is by becoming a premium subscriber of my premium Alpha Male Secrets channel, which I am hosting on a private platform away from YouTube. And the reason I'm doing that is to protect my content Okay, in the event that YouTube tries to shut us down, protect my content, protect you guys. Right now, the first month is only a dollar, so it's only one dollar for the entire first month of premium alpha male content from me. So take advantage of it. You're gonna learn a ton. You're gonna learn about health, fitness, dating advice even. Uh, we're gonna be diving into all those things, helping you to become a better man, a more masculine man, and of course, more alpha in today's highly feminized, highly competitive, emasculated, and pussified world, right? So you're gonna gain a lot of value from it. And again, the first month is only $1, okay? And I'm only charging a buck for the first month because I really want you to check it out. I want you to see it for yourself and see what it's about before you make a larger investment in anything. You know, whether it's any of my programs or if you continue on with the program, I want you to check it out for yourself. Get signed up, it's only $1. Uh, click that link below in my description box. It will take you over to my website where you can get signed up right now. It just takes two seconds, so do that now, and I will see you in my next coaching video.